Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul, Sam Moss, Synchro World Space War 1.12. In this video, I'm going to discuss something that may be inadvisable, an inadvisable idea I had. Well, I'll let you decide whether it's inadvisable or not. Uh, but hopefully it will be thought-provoking. It is one of those ideas that I don't think people have thought about, hopefully. And uh, it has to do with the exploration upper stage for NASA's Space Launch System. This is the newer upper stage that will be coming up, not the one on Artemis 1. Uh, this is for Block 1B of the Space Launch System, SLS, and it has much greater capabilities. And to that end, and especially because of this large tank up here, the hydrogen tank, which is 8.4 meters in diameter, I had an idea. Now, this model that we have for the Space Launch System, Sobols, had a few flaws as far as this particular stage is concerned. It turned out that it made the stage too light, but uh, both in dry mass and in propellant capacity. It only had 15 minutes worth of propellant when it should have had 18. And so if we see now, I have adjusted it. Uh, based on a Boeing document, I have adjusted its dry mass. Uh, you'll have to forgive the mass there right now. That's because of a decoupler. We'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, first of all, let us dump all the propellants and verify. This is 14.137 tons. Uh, that might be a little bit light uh, compared to... It, it depends. The Boeing document had 30,000 pounds to 32,000 pounds. Uh, so I think 32,000 pounds is 14.5 tons, uh, so we're shading a little bit uh, closer to the lower end of the dry mass range that they gave in that document from 2018 for the exploration upper stage. And yeah, but yes, everything was in pounds. <laughs> everything was in pounds and cubic feet. Uh, thinking about it, there's a lot of dry mass of this tank when you consider, let's just take this off for a sec, this is the tank and fueled up, the hydrogen being not very dense, is 24 tons. Unfueled, my estimate was 8 tons. So the dry mass is about 30%. So it's rather horrible as far as dry masses are concerned, but that's how it is with hydrogen tanks. So, okay, now you're wondering what the idea is. Well, as it turns out, uh, if, if we have this empty and all, and we think about the capacity of SLS to the moon. Uh, the capacity of SLS to the moon with this stage is about 37 tons. And when you think about that, if you have the right kind of stage, you could land this entire thing with that payload capacity on the surface of the moon. Uh, it takes about 800 meters per second to capture into low lunar orbit, and then about, at most, 2,600 meters per second to land, and you can do it with 2,000 or less, but 2,600 will get you a very precise landing wherever you want. And you could do that with a stage. Now why would you want to? Why would you want the payload of SLS to be landing the EUS? Well, if you wanted to turn the EUS into a habitat, let's say just the hydrogen tank, this is 8.4 meters in diameter, it is a 7 meters in height. I, I don't know if it's quite that, but anyways, it says 7 meters in height down there. There's enough room for two floors and some, you know, a good ceiling or something. And you just need to put a door in. Uh, it is definitely airtight because it's hydrogen tight. Uh, you know, it has a bo uh, boil off vent or something like that, but still, it contains the hydrogen in there, and hydrogen really likes to leak. So, yeah, it is definitely airtight can stand the pressure of atm regular atmospheric pressure easily and you you will need to do some work with it obviously but uh, you can turn it into a habitat on the moon and it would be the only part of SLS that gets reused that way but uh, oh, I have other reuse options in mind later on but uh, uh, just with this right now so yeah Let's say we were just trying to land this on the moon. Well, it, it becomes a lot easier if it's just this. You need to add some explosive bolts to this part, and we'll have to land this, including this structure here, probably. And we would have to move the control core for EUS, which is actually on the bottom of the oxygen stage here. We needed to move that up in between the two stages, but that shouldn't be, hopefully, too hard, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but then we put 
the lander stage on top. I had that hanging out off to the side there. So we have the fairing base there, we have thrusters, we've got the Apollo landing legs from the FASA mod because I couldn't figure out what are the legs to use. When you tweak scale up the stock legs they get really really massive very quickly. Um, I'm sure we can figure out some reasonable legs. Remember this tank is expected to be empty on landing. Um, we will vent whatever we don't need. So yeah, there's the legs. There are engines that use, in this case, MMH and MON3 so it's storable. Uh, if we wanted to land the entire EUS, then really what we should be using is Hydrolocks. And really we should just replace the RL-10s with the com common extensible cryogenic engines which throttle, basically RL-10s that throttle. Uh, maybe move those engines up a bit, shorten the nozzle, change the shape of the, the oxygen tank, and then, uh, or maybe actually merge the oxygen tank into the hydrogen tank in a common bulkhead thing and or something like that and then you'd have a way to land the whole thing but I don't know what use you'd have for the oxygen tank uh, in Skylab they use the oxygen tank to dump their waste um, so maybe like that but yeah I, I don't know about that I think it's just easier to get the hydrogen tank over there as a base and you're going well uh, should we do that is that a good idea let's say Lunar Starship happens is there a point to this? Well, Lunar Starship can't really send out a module this big, right? It's got a little trap door and everything. Um, I don't think it's going to have the huge hatch because I, I, as far as I know, it's not, you know, it's not going to have the full cargo hatch. So yeah, it's not going to be able to send one of these kinds of modules out pre-built. And you know, they'd have to construct something else, maybe inflatables or something like that. But this has the benefit of having a structure like this already assembled and that's a plus though of course you'd still have to renovate it somewhat. But yeah, so Lunar Starship can't really carry something like this in it and land it on the moon like this. Starship could send it up into low Earth orbit with another state, well, if Starship can fit this, that's a go. You know, you just put this in Starship and it can send it off to the moon just like this. So that, if you really want to use Starship for something, you can do that. Uh, it would need a capacity of 162 tons though. Though this could complete orbit, but then that causes problems for Starship to come back down. Uh, the Delta V is definitely not reading right right now. So in order to make this all work, of course, I had to add a decoupler module to this part here. Like I said, we we're going to separate off the oxygen stage we are going to assume that there are explosive bolts down here and then this will land. As you can see right now we have 3,300 meters per second, we need 800 for capture and then that leaves us with 2,500 for landing which I believe should be enough. And the engines are throttling, MMH Mon3 engines, um, if you could get the lunar module descent engines those would be fine, uh, four of those would do the job. So yep that's the idea so let's put it on an SLS and try it out okay well I want to line up with the moon but I also want to launch with some light around so the sun is setting I think we need to go uh, oh there's no SAS on board interesting I add the command module to the EUS but I never add SAS but that's fine we have smart ASS uh, we're not lined up, but we're using Principia anyway, so it's going to be complicated no matter what. So throttle up, and we'll get this started, and ignition. And launch. Oh, I know why it sidesteps now. It's the tower's arms. They have colliders on them. We need to figure something out about that tower. It's a uh, modular launch pads tower. And not entirely properly sized for SLS right now. Alright, booster separation. Okay, core stage running out, and I think we have enough time to lap lapses for whatever we need to do with the EUS. Still have a relative inclination of 
9.3 degrees though, so... And ignition. And I think I forgot to do the nozzle thing, but anyway, fairing set. Technically, the RL10Cs don't have this extendable nozzle, but we have this model here for now. So yep, yeah, it's just basically a 30 ton tank of MH and Mon 3, some landing legs, in this case I borrowed from FASA, but we probably need other landing legs. Fairly small sized engines, and some solar panels. Not exactly the most common, and RCS thrusters of course, but the main mass would be the tank, that's to be expected. As far as whether we can land this properly on the moon, well, that sort of depends on my propensity for tilting things. <laughs> if we can, then we've got something for the astronauts who land on the moon to do. They need to get this thing habitable, right? It is a wet workshop in that case. I'm not. I'm not thrilled with wet workshops in, in general. Basically, with Skylab, they concluded that they shouldn't do a wet workshop, and instead, instead of using the S2 tank and turning it into a station as a wet workshop, wet workshop meaning that it used to hold the liquid propellant, and it's going to be turned into a workshop. So that was decide. It, they decided that that was not a good idea because it was too hard to work in space to do all the work in order to get the tank ready to be habitable but that was because it was in space and you know they tried it out in the neutral buoyancy tank and they decided that it was not a good idea or pool uh, but in this case we're talking about converting the tank on the surface of the moon where there's gravity but only light gravity so actually it's probably the best possible situation you know you're not working in full gravity but you also have some gravity to work with, so it isn't so cumbersome the way it is in microgravity. So, yep, I think uh, the wet workshop idea is much more doable on the surface of the moon than in the middle of space. Incidentally, while I made the dry mass of this tank 8 tons, it's got to be more than 8 tons with the structure that we have here. I think it's more like the dry mass up here is... 8.6-ish uh, tons, and then the mount that we have here, we've got this payload adapter, that's actually pretty heavy, these procedural truss payload adapters, it's uh, more than 2 tons, so even this regarding the tank that we have here, the dry mass up here is more than 10 tons. Anyway, that's orbit. Okay, I forgot that this was surface velocity, not orbital velocity, orbital velocity is like that. Anyway, and of course, once again, print at BM. Uh, we definitely have enough to transfer to the moon, as expected, uh, since again, we are lighter than the maximum capacity, and yeah, better be able to get to the moon. But now I have to plot the whole thing with print at BM. And we actually want to definitely go out close to our descending node, because it is an off-plane transfer, considering we have a nine degree difference. We could do a mid-course adjustment for that. Well, we, we are sort of passing around polarish, aren't we? I guess that wouldn't be entirely wrong. Okay, yeah, that, that doesn't seem too bad. We're coming in a bit fast, though. It occurs to me, though, I don't really have a way of dumping the hydrogen here. I might have to sneak that in in between. I should have add a dump valve but I'll have to get ship manifest in to do that okay here we go didn't really need the roll part but okay here go those fancy orbits Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> just, I think I just got it in time there. Let's see. I mean... 
is that periapsis the plan or the plan is lower i think ours is higher 76 kilometers but pretty good considering how fast that was getting in there okay well let's just head over there and see what we end up with um so we do have solar panels down here well let's get into sunlight first ah there we go we are tumbling I borrowed these solar panels from the Goku spacecraft, which is also a lunar lander. They are unidirectional, they don't rotate, but they face what would be upward for the lander, so we just need to orient properly. Though technically the controller on here is probably backwards. Hmm, I should have put a different controller to be honest. Now, for a real base, we would probably want to have a nuclear reactor, really. Hook it up to a nuclear reactor, but we wouldn't want the nuclear reactor close to it. We want one of those crusty nuclear reactors, kilowatt things, further away. But, you know, connected and everything. Simple logistics would be a good mod for that. Realism overhauls custom persistent rotation method doesn't have the leeway sometimes of persistent rotation. Persistent rotation was a little bit nicer about this. I mean, in other words, if your rotation was sufficiently low, it would stop, right? It wasn't going to drive you nuts. Yeah, yeah it's still rotating, you see. Persistent rotation would have just left it when it was that low a rate. And now we're going to lose electric charts. Now, I Okay, spin stabilize, I guess. We definitely don't want force roll. We'll, we'll just spin stabilize it. What can I do? Okay, hopefully that'll do. Okay, we can sort of see the moon there. Okay, well, I'm actually not going to cheat by using the RL-10s again. I mean, it, it probably wouldn't be a cheat. You could use them. I mean... If there's propellant, then there seems to be, they have the ignitions, so I wouldn't necessarily think it's that unreasonable, but let us uh, assume that we can't. And we're going to decouple the oxygen stage. See if that works. Okay. It is off, just not with a lot of vigor. And start these engines. And you know what? We needed to have dumped the liquid hydrogen at this point. If we're not going to use it, let me get ship manifest in here. And we need to dump the liquid hydrogen. Otherwise, we probably don't have the delta V. If we're not going to use it, we should have gotten rid of it. So let it boil off. So I'm going to get ship manifest to dump it before we do the retro burn. Otherwise, we're probably... It's doable, but it's tighter than I wanted it to be. Just dump all the liquid hydrogen. And... Ignition. Uh, are we turning the right way? <laughs> uh, no, this doesn't seem right. Um, where are you controlling from? Okay, ignition. Uh, it wants to spin around and around. I think I'm gonna disable gimbling on the engines and see if that helps for now. Uh, we have a fair number of ignitions with these engines. But it really needs to get a hold of itself. Still feels like the engines aren't really helping. Yeah, they seem to be spinning us faster badly. Well, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, we certainly would have enough to land if we could, but I seem to have encountered an issue. Um, whenever I light the engines, as long as they have the gimbling working, it does not seem to like the situation, and it rotates faster even if we're in theory, actuate the, actuating them in the right direction. Well, we've captured. 
okay just bringing it down a little bit lower here it is deviating though you see that hmm well that's gotta be troublesome I think we're gonna suicide burn this um looks like we actually have periapses that's fine we're just gonna go around see if half thrust is okay here it's still deviating to one side there you can see you don't quite understand it we should be quite centered everything is centered on here unless the tank itself has an off-center center of mass well we've got a negative periapsis and a suicide burn countdown so let's proceed with that Again, not sure how much thrust I can use. We'll see. The longer we have to burn for, and the lower the throttle, of course, the more extra delta V we're going to have to use. All because of this weird deviation that's doing. Now, we're getting to limits on pitch there if I throttle up. I don't know, there's definitely some imbalance. Which would be fine if the gimbling on the engines didn't do like the opposite of what they ought to. Well, I don't know if this is good enough or not. We're going to find out. It's all sketchy. But not because of the Delta V requirements, that was fine. It's just a matter of the control mechanism here. Now, it seems like it can sustain this throttle, maybe? That is definitely not flat. That surface is not flat. Oh, okay, 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 uh, okay, just kill rotate, uh, okay, uh, oh no, we've got too much horizontal and it's gonna, uh, no, it landed. These, these Apollo landing legs are good. <laughs> that would have definitely tipped over anywhere else. It's the Apollo landing legs, uh, these LEM landing legs are super wonderful. Okay, well, we landed it somehow. Uh, that was dodgy, but you get the picture. Now we've got it here. That's not so it comes separately and get in there somehow. Presumably a hatch will have to be made. And then we can refurbish it. And then they can stay in there. Probably uh, I would recommend having different propellants. Methane oxygen would be better. Hydrogen oxygen would be best. Uh, mainly because then we don't have the toxic propellants here, right? Right now we've got MH and Mon3 sitting there. I mean, not that that hurt the uh, Apollo crew, but if they're going to be living in here, maybe they should have something that's not so toxic. So that's a consideration. But yes, a prospective moon base using the hydrogen tank of EUS and, e and SLS can just launch it over here and the stage that would be required to land it would fit within the payload capacity of SLS. That is the point. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.